So here's the big question. How do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? That's the question. And this is the place where you're going to find the answers. My name is Jamie Irvin, and we are live in five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to another edition of Jamie Irvin Live. Today is Thursday, August 12, 2021. So happy that you are here with us today to talk about how to sell heavy-duty parts in a digital world. Today, we're going to start a, this is really episode one of four that we're going to focus on the four stages of digital sales channel adoption. So we are into something like week 16 of the Jamie Irvin live program. And the next four weeks, the next month, we are going to go deep on this very important conversation. Now, before we get started today, this is a live broadcast. So if you would like to make a comment, or ask a question, regardless of what platform you're on, YouTube, Facebook, or LinkedIn, go ahead and do so. I will do my best to incorporate you in today's conversation. And if I do miss you by any chance, we will do what we can to contact you afterwards and answer your questions directly. So what is the subject of today's conversation? Well, again, it's all about the four stages of digital sales channel adoption. This is the, the very heart of trying to figure out how to sell heavy duty parts in a digital world. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention that today's episode is sponsored by the Heavy Duty Parts Report, our weekly podcast that comes out on Monday. And so if you would like to uh, check out that, go over to heavydutypartsreport.com and you'll be able to check out our weekly podcast interviewing heavy duty parts specialists and industry experts focusing on how to lower total cost of operation and cost per mile for fleets. And regardless of whether you are buying and selling parts or if you are installing those parts, the Heavy Duty Parts Report is the show for you. So we're so happy to be sponsored by heavy, the Heavy Duty Parts Report. And if you want to check it out, again, heavydutypartsreport.com. Okay, so that brings us to the main theme of today. We're going to, over the next month, break down the four stages of digital sales adoption, setting up a digital sales channel in your traditional heavy duty parts business. Now, these four stages are applicable regardless of whether you're a manufacturer who is going to do business to business e-commerce and, and have a digital sales channel that caters to their distributors, or if you're a distributor and you want to sell directly to the owner operators, the truck drivers, the repair shops, mobile mechanics, and the fleets with repair shops. So regardless of whether you're B2B or B2C or a combination of both, these four stages are applicable to you. Today, we're going to focus on online content. This is considered stage one. And really today, I want to talk about why that is, what you need to do, how you should go about it, and then we will move on next week to talk about the other three stages, which by the way, if you're curious, is e-commerce sales force alignment with stage three, and stage four is complete digital transformation. So I'm really excited about talking about those. But let's get back to today's conversation, online content. So why is online content the first stage in creating a digital sales channel for your heavy duty parts business? Well, it's twofold. The first side of the equation is that no matter how good your digital sales channel is, no matter how good your website is, no matter how good your e-commerce platform is, no matter how many great products you're selling, if you don't have traffic, it's not going to work. Some designers have actually said that Amazon's overall website, not so good. It's not the greatest website in the world, but they have the traffic. Therefore, they have the billions and billions and billions of dollars in sales. So without sufficient traffic to your site, your e-commerce efforts, your digital sales channel is not going to work at the level it needs to, to truly be successful. But if you can get the traffic, wonderful things can happen. 
as they say, sales is uh, something that covers over a lot, <laughs> a lot of things. And so if you've got the traffic and you've got the revenue and the sales, you will be able to advance your business and do very well. Getting traffic to your site is a long marathon type journey. It is certainly not a sprint. And in order to rank for organic traffic on search engines, you, you need three pillars in place. So you need relevant content that's high quality. You need a user experience on the site that is built for mobile applications and is considered by the search engine like Google to be a good user experience. So not a lot of pop-ups, not, not uh, you know, the, the menu button in the wrong spot. We have to think about how using our mobile device on this site impacts the, the overall user experience of, of the person using the website. And so the way we structure the site, what we put on the homepage, the copy that we use, that's all online content. That's all part of it. It's, it's part of the marketing side of driving traffic to the site. And in order to really get traffic, you need that relevant content. You need that good user experience. And then you also need backlinks and backlinks are just other people who are in the industry who are, have, have high domain scores and who are quality, uh, you know, websites that represent the industry, if we're all linked together, then it will actually improve the overall performance of each site that is linked to one another. So this is right now the way that the search engines are working. This may change over time, but the overall principles of relevant content, the, a good user experience and a high quality site, this is all part of getting sufficient traffic to the site. And so the site has to be targeting the specific keywords that people are searching for. So when people are searching for information about heavy duty parts, you know, you want your site to show up. And there's a long strategy there to, to build a library of content over time that is ranked high, that the website domain authority is going up, that the links are, are, are giving cues to Google, that this is a high quality place to send traffic. And that's all part of the content strategy. There's another side to that as well. And, and that is, is that your customers, when they come to the site, this is, this needs to be a trusted source of information. This needs to be a place where they go, not just to buy the parts, but to get the relevant information they need to be more successful. And when you're trying to entice people to use the website and start buying parts on your e-commerce platform, you want to be able to demonstrate with the content that you're providing those prospective customers that it really explains to them the, the stakes. So when they buy a specific part, what's the, what's the stakes? If you buy a low quality part and you break down, what's that going to cost you? If you buy a high quality part, it's going to last longer. What, what's the economic upside to doing that? So we want to be that trusted source, that guide that helps people to make good buying decisions. And so right from the homepage where we're enticing people to, to start using the website, right through to when they start doing searches for specific parts, or they read blog articles or watch videos about specific categories of products, they're viewing this site as a trusted source, as a place they can go to be more successful in their business. So that customer centric content is so critical to making all this work. So there's many facets to this, but this will all, if you do all of these things together and you do it for a long enough period of time, this will enable you to, to drive traffic to your site, traffic that will actually convert into buying customers. So we take people from prospects who are just checking the site out and discovering us for the first time all the way through to being a repeat customer buying parts from us on a regular basis. Now, online traffic is not just generated from online sources. It's also generated from offline sources. And this is why later on in a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about alignment between the sales team and the digital sales channel and, and how that works all together and why that's so important. But if you follow the advice I've given you and you really have that customer centric mentality and you're building content that is useful and valuable to your customers, you're going to set yourself up for success on multiple levels. And we'll talk more about that.
Now, another thing that is so important with a digital sales channel is, of course, the actual parts information. This is also considered content. It's not marketing content, but it's still online content nonetheless. And if you're going to have a successful e-commerce platform, you have to have your parts information organized in a way that one makes it easy for the customer to identify what they need to buy. And then also that data has to be organized in such a way that makes it easy for your system to be able to calculate things like shipping costs and to be able to process orders that are submitted via the digital sales channel, i.e. the e-commerce platform. So that part of the content game is extremely, extremely intensive because oftentimes we're, we're exporting information, raw data from our ERP. So when I was selling heavy duty parts, a lot of the companies I work for, they use Carmack. And in there we had part numbers and cross-reference information and descriptions, and uh, we had pricing matrix and th those things. But that doesn't necessarily translate into a good experience for someone online using e-commerce. With that, we need images and we need dimensions and we need other product information. So I recommend that you standardize your data using AutoCare's standard. And there are two standards you want to consider. The first one is PIES. And that is all that information I was talking about, dimensions and, and descriptions and all of that kind of information. And then there's ACES, which is, is really just your year, make, model, and engine, if applicable, uh, information that ties back to that part number. I would say that in heavy duty parts, especially on the aftermarket side, the availability of ACES information is often limited. And so PIES information is probably the place you're going to start and put the most energy. And if you need a partner for this, then I recommend you working with a company called OptiCat, O-P-T-I-C-A-T. So check out OptiCat. You can Google them. And uh, they have worked with the auto care organization to produce these standards. And they are a tremendous resource to help you to organize and standardize your data and turn your raw data and your parts information into usable online content for your e-commerce site. So you have to think about both sides of the equation. There's the, there's the content side from the marketing perspective, from, from the creating a trusted source for your customers and providing them with what they need. And then there's the parts information that has to be there so that they can make a good buying decision. And this has to be all married together in under one category of online content in order for you to be successful. Okay, so once we've started down this road, the next step and, and really the next stage is to get your e-commerce platform ready to be used by the public. And that is that stage two. We're gonna talk about that next week. So tune back in next week as we continue our conversation and our exploration of answering the one question, which is how do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? Next week, we're gonna really dig into e-commerce. We're gonna talk about different platforms that are available and I'm gonna make a recommendation. So tune back in for that. If you would like some help, some expert help with your online content, why not send me an email, Jamie, at heavydutypartsreport.com. I'd be happy to have an initial conversation with you to look at your current situation, where you are in this journey. And me and my team have developed expertise in helping companies just like you develop the necessary online content to successfully incorporate a digital sales channel into their business model. And this is a lot of what we're doing with our clients right now. There are a lot of fundamentals that we've reviewed in the last 16 weeks or so on, on Jamie Irvin Live, but we go into, into expert level uh, analysis of your messaging, of the online content that needs to be created in order for you to be successful. Again, this is not a sprint. It is a marathon, but if you need some help, if you need another set of eyes, someone who's been there, who's seen it done across a lot of different companies in this industry, reach out to us. You can email me, jamie at heavydutypartsreport.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Jamie Irvin Live. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.